Hey guys, it's Footer Gamer from Sort It Out as I Don't Know here. This is our first video in four years, and hopefully it's the start of something great. What we're going to do is try and do something a little new, a little bit different. We're going to get other YouTubers to come onto our channel and talk about what's going on on their channels. I'm excited to say that FM Lama is first up. He's going to be giving us a condensed version of his Let's Play series, Beg, Burrow, Steal. There's nearly two hours of content on his channel covering the first season, but in this video, he'll be giving you the 10 minute version. If you like it, be sure to check out his channel and keep following along in more detail. Anyway, over to you, FM Llama. Hello, my name is FM Llama. Welcome to my Barcelona apartment. Why are we in Barcelona? Well, more on that in a moment, but over on my YouTube channel, as well as finding videos about the countries you could load in Football Manager and the series about save ideas to inspire your next Football Manager adventure, on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, I update viewers with the save that I'm running in FM22. But for this video, Sort It Out SI contacted me and asked if I would do an end of season one review of the series that I've called Beg, Borrow, Steal. A Sort It Out SI is the site where I get all of my graphics for Football Manager. I jumped at the opportunity. The country I chose for my FM22 adventure was Spain. But let's introduce you to the club that we took over and how we did in our first campaign. So here's the club we chose, Club Esportiu Europa. But before we tell you about them, don't forget to subscribe to the Sort It Out SI YouTube channel and hit the bell for notifications when new videos get released. And also head over to the Sort It Out SI website if you want to download many of the graphics that you'll find in this video. All of the faces that you see in here are from Sort It Out SI's Cut Out Face Pack Mega Pack. I'm even using the Material 2.0 skin from their website so that we can show you Europa's beautiful ground. You'll find that all of the logos come from the Sort It Out SI website. They will sort you out whatever your graphical needs. But to Europa, why did I decide to take charge of this club who are from Barcelona? but are languishing down in Spain's fourth tier. Well, I am from the city of Birmingham in England, and in the 1920s, Europa were Barcelona's biggest rivals in Catalan football, and they were managed by a man from Birmingham. In fact, this distinctive V-shaped design that they have on their kits is inspired by a friendly that Europa played against Birmingham City when they were first formed. So. I thought there was a nice little synergy behind taking over a club that used to be battling Barcelona for the Catalan title and were one of the founding members of La Liga. But now they're down in the fourth tier and we're going to try and take them all the way back to the big time. Over on my channel, you can watch episodes of Beg, Borrow and Steal. Why did we call the series that? Well, we've set ourselves an added little challenge. We're going to try and reach the top flight of Spanish football without spending any money on transfers. We're just going to beg players to come for free. We're going to try and borrow them on loan from other teams and steal any players that are reaching the end of their contracts. Shall we show you the squad that we assembled for our first season at Europa? So at the start of the season, not much was expected of Europa. The media were predicting that they'd finish down in 15th place, so not meant to battle for promotion, but instead look over their shoulders and try and avoid relegation. To help avoid that, we made a few transfers when we took over the club. A lot of it was the borrowing part of Beg, Borrow and Steal, as we bought in four players on loan. The only player that we managed to beg to come was a vital one. This was Guillermo Smitarella, who was going to play in defence for us because we had quite an ageing squad. Our centre-backs were 35 and 33 respectively and their legs were not getting any younger. Maybe we should jump into the squad and show you what we started the season with. So one of the things we tried to do when we started this save was allow viewers to vote on key decisions that the club could take. The first decision we allowed them to vote on was what our DNA should be. Should we be a club based on flair, vision, creativity and movement? Or should we be a club with a DNA for fighting spirit, bravery, determination, teamwork and work rate? They chose the latter. And the next decision we allowed them to make was what kind of formation should we start the season with? 
We pitched two ideas with them, starting with a back three, two in central midfield, and a front three with wide players, or a 4-3-3 formation with a DM. They voted to start with the 4-3-3, and it's how we began the campaign. Let's introduce you to some of the players that were going to be key if we were going to have a good season, starting with our striker, Javi Solsona, who I like the look of. He was pretty quick. He's got good composure, good off the ball movement, not a great finisher. But remember, this is the fourth tier of Spanish football. And he was backed up by two decent wide players. David Jimenez was quick, was a good dribbler, and looked like he might be able to get in the box and score goals, as did Jordi Chano, who again was just as quick to put in a cross as well, this boy. And the two of them together looked like they could provide good ammunition for Solsona. In defence, we had a couple of good fullbacks that we inherited as well. Guti was incredibly pacey and looked like he could raid down the left. And over on the right, Sergi Pastea looked like he could be a decent option. On the right-hand side, you'll see for the fourth tier of Spanish football, we got some pretty quick players at the club. Perhaps the other strong player that we had was in goal where Sergio was a six foot five inch stopper that was going to be a pretty tough target for the opposition to try and score past. So we allowed the viewers to decide what our formation was going to be for our opening campaign. Let's show you how we fared during the first half of the season. I don't think anybody was more surprised by the start we made than I was. I thought we might have a strong attack but a weak defence, but we kept clean sheets. In each of our opening six games, we didn't suffer a defeat until game week nine. We managed to win eight of our opening 10 encounters, all of which mean that we were able to be top of the table after 10 games. It was tight and only one team gains automatic promotion out of this division. But if we could carry on this kind of form, well, we might be able to romp our way home to a title in our first season in charge of Europa. So as we moved into the second half of the season, we were still in contention at the top of the table. We were three points off the summit, but we were no longer leading the pack. Our problem was that we'd started to lose to the teams that were also contesting for the title of our four defeats. One of them was to the team in second, and another was to the team who were top, who just would not lose a game. They only lost once in their first 21 encounters. And our problem was that we were struggling to hit the back of the net. I thought that we would be very strong in attack, but we'd only managed to score 28 goals during our first 21 games. The team that were top had scored 38. We were tight at the back. I was worried that we might be leaky, but we had the fewest conceded of any of the teams in the division. We just needed to try and find a way of hitting the back of the net more regularly during the second part of the campaign. Let's skip right to the end of the season and show you whether we were able to make up that three-point deficit. You knew the answer to that question before I'd even finished asking it. Not only could we not regain our position at the top of the table, but we fell further down it. We finished fourth in the end level on points with the team that came third, but well off top spot in the end. And our Achilles heel was our inability to score goals. We only managed to notch 43 all season and in the second half of the campaign we weren't as strong defensively managing to concede 31 goals as well it meant that rather than get promotion automatically we had to go into a playoff with other teams from Spain's fourth tier we went into that playoff semi-final with confidence because in our last league game of the season our misfiring striker Javi Solsona had managed to score a brace. We'd switched to a new formation by this stage and were trialling out a 4-4-1-1. Solsona had had a pretty rough campaign. He'd only managed to score six goals going in to the last game of the season. But in it, he managed to score from a header in the 20th minute. And then in the 82nd minute, he scored a rather cheeky little effort. Jordi Chano raided down the right, sent a ball into the box, and our mate Solsona made out like he'd not been having a rough time in front of goal at all and was scoring back-heeled volleys on the final day of the season. It meant that we went into that playoff semi-final having not conceded in two with a new formation that seemed to be working 
and a goal scorer that was back in form. So of course, with all of that pre-match optimism, we went behind in the semi-final inside the first minute. In fact, I don't think we'd even touched the ball by the time our opponent's Izara had gone in to a 1-0 lead. We huffed and we puffed for the rest of the game. We dominated the match stats, but our old Achilles heel came back to haunt us as once more we were unable to score a goal in a game. It meant that there was no playoff finals for us. We were consigned to another season in Spain's fourth tier, but we were a club that was meant to battle relegation, and we did a little bit better than that. But having led the league for much of the season, it was very disappointing that we fell so far down the league and couldn't get through to at least make a playoff final. If you'd like to see how we get on in Season 2, well, jump over to my YouTube channel. You'll find links in the video description below where you can follow along on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And don't forget to subscribe to Sort It Out SI's channel so that you get updates and notifications as they make new videos available. Hopefully, we'll see you over on my channel to see how we do in Season 2.